Power Moves. Join me and my partner, Joel Sylvain, on Power Moves, where celebrities, athletes, and key influential executives share how they make money, attract power, and earn respect. We're on In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everybody is a star. Our show is sponsored by Sports and Entertainment Partners, Pro to CEO Jawan Howard and Oxygen and the Smile Experience, serving mothers and living elegantly. The question today is, what power move will you take away to propel your life? I'm here, and today we're getting started. Um, There's a lot going on in the world today. You know, you could pick the issue and you could talk about it for hours. Uh, We tend to focus on business uh, and business creation. We tend to focus on sports and entertainment. And today we're so fortunate to be able to discuss one thing that's local because we're based in Tampa. We are talking about the big win with the Bucks last night. All right, just real quick, y'all. Yes, the Bucks won 13 to 12. Uh, we pulled it out, so we're doing a lot better than we have been. So congratulations to those guys. Uh, I know it's early in the season. We're preseason, but we're doing uh, some fantastic things. Uh, so we're happy to hear that the Bucks are doing well. Uh, we're also um, talking in the world of sports here. There's a lot going on uh, with all these moves uh, happening in business and industry, but I want to take a break here and invite some great people here that we have today. Joel, welcome to the show, my brother. What's yes, happening? Sir, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Joel is in the building, baby. <laughs> That's right. Brooklyn's in the house. And once, we're about once to, again, this yes. is Power Moves, power where moves. celebrities, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money how they attract power, power and how they earn, earn respect. respect. So yes, uh, before we get started, uh, you know, today's a, a special day. Happy birthday to Justine Sky, who also shares it with Mrs. Daly over here. Hey. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah, we are so applause, happy. applause. Woo, 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 woo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And in and in the in the world of, of entertainment, I gotta give a big shout out to my man Steve Rhythm. Steve, that I've uh, been yes, working sir. with Jadena. Jadena just dropped the album, uh 85 to Africa. Woo, it's a worldwide J- beautiful Jadena album. Jadena. Okay. Yeah, okay, he just okay. came out with his, He's got his, his album new? release. This is dope. Okay. And then Raphael Sadiq. Okay. Just dropped one. And okay. I don't I mean, I listen to it. It is John Blaze. So <laughs> for families, it's all about this black excellence. That's why we have the Daily family yes, in the house. We are. And so let's introduce the Daily family, Mr. Eric. Daily in the house. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So, you know, one of the things I want to say, man, we met, what, oh, shoot, almost 10 years ago, right? No, oh, man. Maybe it was yeah. probably, I think it was around uh, 2010. Maybe yeah, 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 it yeah. Was, yeah. For sure. And, uh, yeah. and you've been really doing your thing when it comes down to, I mean, you're so passionate uh, about basketball. And as you can tell, this is a, a family affair. Mm-hmm. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, well, that's why we have Kevin Carr from Pro to CEO in the yes. house. P to C in the house. P to C, you know, you which go. is, uh, <laughs> you know, Mr. <laughs> career crossover. Hey, hey, <laughs> right. Right. You know, and, All right. you know, Appreciate one of the that. things he likes to espouse is the non medallions. Yes, the non medallions stand for champion, right? Yes, sir. And so what's going to be the medallion and the theme for today with the, the daily family? Well, they, they uh, fully represent. <clears throat> multiple medallions so i they just sure can't do. give them one <laughs> they got mad skills over here but we're going to start with opportunism this mm. family literally knows when opportunity is around them they prepare for it so when it comes they never miss a beat that's right so we're going to start right there I, you know i like that one i like yeah, that one yeah, so with, with that being said let's let's share a little bit about your story Mr. Daly. Yeah, take us back. Yeah, yeah, bring okay, us forward. Okay, okay. Well, I'm uh, originally from Ocala, Florida. Okay. Maybe about two hours from here, hour and a half from here. 17, I, I got a scholarship to Western Carolina University. And I stayed there for two years. I had a, a really good career going. I was one of the top freshmen in the country at the time. But I wanted more. So uh, I transferred to Texas Christian University. TCU. Yeah, right. okay. I transferred. Um, in, in 1991, okay. and I stayed at 
TCU for three years. I was all conference player. Okay. Averaged 16 points, nine rebounds, uh, pretty much for my career mm. at both schools. Mm. Okay. And didn't get drafted in '94. So okay. it was mm. a wake up call for me. Okay. And okay. it was time for me to go live, go and attack the world. Yeah, so man. I could have stayed here, played in CBA and some of the minor leagues, but I chose to attack the European route. Okay. And man, it's paid dividends. You know, initially I didn't think it was. Um, you know, it wasn't sexy at the time. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right, right. You overseas, yeah, you didn't yeah. make it to the league. Why you? <laughs> they be asking me why you didn't go to the league. I'm like, mm-hmm. man, it's 300 spots, dude. It's it's 300 <laughs> people in your city. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I got over there, man. It was it was really difficult at first because I didn't uh, understand the European way of life, mm-hmm. and you know, we weren't taught that over here. You're talking '94. That's pre-internet. Right, you know, right. free cell phones, you okay. know, so I didn't have that. So I have to go down the street and talk on the phone, you know, at one o'clock in the morning on a pay phone that's a half a mile away from where I'm staying mm. and put, you know, 20 quarters in so I can get to the AT&T <laughs> operator. Um, so, so, I, so, so pause on that real quick because, yeah, yeah, you know, say, you, you got to get some perspective. right? Yeah. Here. So basically, you know, your goal was to be professional, Definitely. go professional, go NBA. Right. And, it didn't quite f- fall into place the way you wanted it to. Right. Right. But you still had to eat. Boy, <laughs> hey, listen. Right. You got to eat every day. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. So that's really the point that I want to make is that even though <laughs> where, you know, some people may consider that as a failure, that they didn't make it to the ultimate goal. But sometimes you got to learn to pivot just like in the in the basketball. You know, you need to switch the move. Right. So right. I just want to make sure that we accentuate that point. Um, so go back to the, the 20 quarters, the culture shift, yeah, because obviously yeah. it wasn't not just basketball and making a living. You also had to adjust culturally. Yeah, yeah, we, we know you from Ocala, but now you where? Where are you Okay, at? so in, in, in 89, I'm in Ocala. <laughs> in five years later, I'm in Stubo, Portugal. Uh, <laughs> oh. I ain't even not Lisbon, you know, not <laughs> the capital. I'm in Stubo, Portugal, and when I arrived to the airport, I'm... First of all, I'm scared. Mm-hmm. So I didn't understand fear until I was alone. And mm-hmm. once I once I once I knew I was alone and on the other side of the planet, and I knew I couldn't just drive home, fear took over. <laughs> right. I was like, man, this, this I'm, I'm six thousand miles away from home. I'm 22 years old, and then Pepe drives up in this little car and hands me a handful of money. He's uh-huh. like, Here's your first month, and I'm like, damn. <laughs> like, what do I do with this money? Yeah. I don't even. There's no Bank of America. You know, <laughs> over here. I don't know. You know, I just got a passport. And the one horror story that most you know older athletes tell you is, don't give up your passport. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's don't right. Give them your passport. Right. So, man, they made the mistake of like ten days later of asking me for my passport. Okay. And I took off. I'm like, I'm out of here. They're trying to keep me over here. They're going to kidnap me. I can't go back home. I called my mom in the middle of the night, man, and I just burst out. I'm gone. They they called me in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Like, So uh, I, my first contract, I was there for like two weeks. Wow. Just because. And I was like, I didn't know. And when I got back, that's when I realized what you just said. I got to eat. <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? You didn't get drafted. You know, CBA is not paying a bunch of money. Mm-hmm. You got to go get your money over in Europe. And I was like, all right. So the next job, I was in Lati, Finland. Man, mm-hmm. it was refreshing. It was where they had the uh, 68 Winter Olympics. Okay. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I had a really professional team. The city was, it was a small city, but it was clean. The people were nice. Mm-hmm. And that helped me adjust to the European life. And from there on, man, I was, uh, you know, just international. So, so talk to us about when you made this transition. Did you plan on playing for how many years, and while you were over there, what were you thinking as you were playing? And you know, you could have said, "I want to come back this way," but you kind of dug in overseas and began to think differently about what it could be to be a businessman potentially in basketball. So, definitely, talk, definitely. take us there. Great, great point, Kevin. Great point. Well, after me. after year two. I, I played in Madrid after that fin, Finland stop. And once I got to Spain, man, it was just, I was like, oh, I love it. Mm-hmm. So I loved it culturally. The people loved me. 
I understood that, you know, it just wasn't as dangerous over there <laughs> as it is over here. Like in Portugal. <laughs> yeah, man. It was, you know, it was, it was cool. So yeah. I went back home after Spain and I tore my right ACL. So mm. it was a little more like, dude, you almost got to go over here. Mm -hmm. Because now you're damaged. You still can play, right. but you're damaged. Mm -hmm. So I dug in like, all right, go back overseas. Go get your money because it's, it's tax free. You got a house, you got a mm. car, you got a driver in some cases. Um, and then the people loved you. So I was like, go back and get your money there. And that's what I did. Um, once I started understanding that I wanted to go over to Europe or Asia and play, I started getting into the business side of the game and understanding mm. how I got over here. How did I get over here? There's some guy in this country that knows this team that looking for a player well man i don't have to have that guy i can just talk straight to the teams there you go you know mm -hmm. or i can talk to this guy in china opposed to having an agent over here in you know new york mm -hmm. chicago it's like he's here you know when i get in trouble in turkey i gotta go to the turkish agent right mm -hmm. so i started I i'm one of the best Networking. <laughs> That's the key power I move. That's right. Network. Yeah. So I would see the other American player and I'd ask him, Who's your agent? Oh, this is my agent. Let me get your number. Let me get his number. Cool. All right, who's your agent? Let me get his number, your number. And I had a network of agents all over Europe, all over South America, all over Asia. And I became my primary agent. So I became the one that would send the videotape. The one that would uh, call the agent and make sure he talked to the team. Mm. And I started representing myself from here with another international agent. Mm. So people would be like, how'd you get that job? Well, I really represent myself. That's right. But I'm right, talking right. to Miguel down in, in Argentina. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying to talk to Tom in Philadelphia to talk to Miguel to talk to the team. There you go. And Tom's got 20 more players that make more money than you. <laughs> so now who's he going to work for, you or, or them? Or them. So see, I, the, see I, that's smart. That's yeah, smart yeah, business yeah. Uh, that's acumen right there, which is which is interesting. We call that a power move. That's early right. Early because it shows power move. But early in your career, you were able to do that. That's fantastic. So I think one of the things that we're trying to make sure people understand is there's opportunity all around All you. around. And Definitely. you seem to have grabbed that really, really early in your basketball career. There you go. That's well, that's awesome. a, awesome. and uh, some of the folks here on uh, on the Facebook Live is asking. Great interview. Who are we speaking? We are speaking with Eric Daly from EricDalyTraining.org. dot org. Um, he is uh, an international basketball icon, and we have his wife on the line. Which so, how did you and your wife meet? Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> so, so, so Shell's over here smiling, you know hey, looking hey, like she the almost looking girl. like. Yeah. I never knew that about you. <laughs> <laughs> almost. It's oh, it's love. It's love. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, talk to us a little bit about you, but before oh, but we, we do that, do that. We're, we're gonna, gonna go have on, Esteban go on break. take us out on the break, and when we get back, that's you're right. Up next, you're, you're up next. Shoot? Okay. You so once up. again, this okay. is Power Moves, Power where moves, celebrities, celebrities athletes, athletes, key influential executives share how they make money, money how they attract power, power and how they earn respect. respect so see you after the break. Yes, we'll be right oh, back. Yeah. My name is Gil Sampson. I didn't come from a very rich family, and so paying for college would have been very tough. I don't know if I would have been able to go to the college that I went to, and then I don't know if I would have gotten into the career that I am in. So I think Bright Futures has done a lot to shape my life. I uh, got a job as a structural engineer, and I design residential buildings, commercial buildings all over the United States. Because of Bright Futures, I was able to go to college. You know, so many kids just don't even ever get that opportunity. And to be able to do it and not have any debt when I graduated is amazing. And it was all thanks to Bright Futures. Florida has created more than one million jobs in only five years, and a great education connects our students to these exciting opportunities. That's why the Florida Lottery has funded Bright Futures scholarships to help over 725,000 students attend college. 
because every play is for education. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. This is Linda Archie with Tayo Temple United Methodist Church. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month at the Village Market East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Free parking, free admission, fresh produce, live entertainment, vendor shopping, and delicious cooked food. Join us every first and third Saturday of the month, beginning June 22nd. For vendor information, call me, 1-888-991-2502. See our ad in In Touch News or Florida Sentinel. Please call me at 1-888-991-2502. The Village Market at East Tampa, 3206 North Sanchez Street. Touch Radio, the most loved station across the nation. In, 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 Touch Radio, Radio, Radio. Tell a friend, In Touch Radio. All right, we back, we back. Once again, this is Power Move. In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. All right, a quick uh, commercial break. You know, once again, this, this show is sponsored by Oxygen, uh, which is Jawan Howard's baby company. Yeah, we got we got the massage oils in here in the house, the R and R revive and rejuvenate, Absolutely. and the pain creams. Yep. You know, so trust me, it works because I use it. You know, I'm 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 not as uh, young as I used to be. <laughs> oh, we have a model. Yes, yes. <laughs> check her smile. <laughs> All right. So speaking of our model, we have. Uh, Mama Bear, and, and uh, we're going we're going to kind of get into how did you guys meet, and obviously, and and you share your story because you're also a professional basketball player yourself. Yeah, well, well, how Eric and I, how Eric and I met was uh, I saw him walking across the gym. We were actually playing basketball and kind of talking trash to each other. Uh, so uh, I thought it was kind of cute. To uh-huh, so uh-huh. I was like, ah, and he smiled at me. So it was over from the time that I saw his teeth. Uh-huh. And I thought, I was like, oh, he is beautiful. Uh-huh. But, uh, there you go. Okay. So then we Love played it. and we would meet up at the gym every day. And, and the, I think one of the last things, I think we were playing like a shooting game or right. something of that nature. And he came out and he dunked on me. And I was like, oh, yeah, I like him. Wow. Power control, I like that. Damn, E, you, got, you went there. <laughs> you got a dunk on him, man. I think take, I was winning no the shooting drill. I think I was winning the shooting contest. So he had to step up. I made Just him go there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he went there. So tell us your, your basketball story and where you are from, you know, playing to now you're in a a real leadership position i am i am i had the opportunity to play at the university of texas Okay. Time they were Which one? Uh, so uh, Austin. Okay, Austin. Austin. We're the, the Longhorns. The only one. Only one. one. Only I knew one. she was going to go there. Go there. <laughs> yeah, we're, we were the only one. And at the time, we were a dominant team in women's basketball. Sure. So I'm proud to say, you know, that I was a part of a uh, legacy sure. or dynasty in, in some instances. And from there, I didn't really know what I wanted to do as far as uh, after college. I knew, I thought at the time that I didn't want to do anything related to sports. So I have a business degree. Okay. Mm-hmm. So so with that, uh, it was so funny. I was a junior executive for Neiman Marcus at the time. Okay. okay. So uh, I would sit in the office, and when um, March Madness came, I would just freak out. Because, <laughs> you know, I was at a computer. I was missing, and things were going on, and yeah. I wanted to be a part. part of it. So I had the opportunity to, to coach, and I didn't know if I wanted to do it or not. And I tried it, and I've been doing it ever since. Wow. So wow, that's amazing. I, so I got the opportunity to coach in Division One. Uh Big 12 and SEC, okay. uh, Florida, South Carolina, TCU, wow. uh, Texas A&M, and also WNBA. I was head coach in San Antonio. Oh, at the Silver Star. Silver Star. That's, right, that's, yes. right, that's right. You, yes. you know about that, Kev. Mm-hmm. I know a little something <laughs> about, the, about the logo man and woman. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's yes. right. Oh, I do, I do. Yes. And then, good. then from there, of course, a blessing came into our lives, Eric mm-hmm. Jr. Mm-hmm. And I, that nurturing side of me, I didn't want to drag Eric all the way around the country. And I tried it at first, but it was just something I wanted to be a mom. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I had the opportunity to uh, accept a position at IMG Academy in mm-hmm. Bradenton which is not that far. And sure. I 
still was passionate about the game, still around the game. And I'm a director there of the girls' sports and uh, really loving what I'm doing. And I get to see my son every single day, uh, which, is, which is amazing. And I see his growth and his potential. So. Yeah, and, and, that, and that, that that puts pressure on a little E. I feel bad for that brother. Because <laughs> so, so Big E and Mama E are like, wait a minute, what, what happened there? Okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, and academically in the classroom. I know because uh-huh. yes. sure. both of you yeah, are sure. excellent in terms of how you look at education and uh, education in life. So let me talk, talk to us a little bit about um, you're on the inside and, you know, not so much on every single bit, but talk to us about, you know, the platform of ING and what what happens when someone comes there. Because there are a lot of people hear about it, but in terms of what, what happens as when you come into a system like that, what's the ultimate goal for IMG for its athletes and their entire experience on and off the field or court? Well, coming into the system at IMG, it's more of on their development. Mm-hmm. Like so many people get it confused. It's only elite athletes. Right. And there are elite athletes there. I'm not going to uh, discredit that at all. But sure. it's more on a development to where we start and try to find uh, a good foundation for them to have a chance at the next level. Mm-hmm. So we mm-hmm. really build and make sure that, you know, that they're what we call is the total athlete. They've gone through every facet that you can think of in their life that they will experience mm-hmm. at a young age. Okay. So it's, it's a great experience. Uh, you know, we often talk about uh, we wish that we could have had that sure, uh, opportunity yeah. growing right. up and, right. and see the potential mm-hmm. and what it could really build. You know, um, could you share with us, you know, your your thoughts on equal pay for women and, you know, this movement that's that's going on, you know, you know especially being that you started – as a as a female coach in college and then going into the pros, you know, what impact have you seen and, and what advice can you share with, with other, you know, young ladies out there that are interested in coaching uh, on a professional level? You know, I've been blessed in my career that I was in uh, BCS schools, mm-hmm. uh, the big time schools sure. to where my pay was equal. Mm-hmm. But I did understand um, that there was – and there is some inequality mm-hmm. in the sport just because we are women. Right. Uh, we're doing the same job. We're recruiting the same way. <laughs> That's we're, right. You know, and you don't get that, I guess you say, love. Mm-hmm. Um, I am probably was a big advocate, <laughs> you know, growing up and, and really seeing uh, the the difference, I guess I could say, in, in the pay. Uh, is it fair? No. Mm-hmm. Uh, because the work is equal. Right. And uh, so I would say to young ladies to make sure that you're aware that you know what you're doing. So when you open your mouth, you've earned that check. It's not one of those mm-hmm. things to where just because, you know, I'm at this school that I deserve to get the same pay. You have to work in order to get those uh, credentials. That's right. I think so. I think everybody needs to pay their dues. I was, a, I was the one that paid their dues. And I always give this advice, too. Try to use the resources around you. I was one of those that I didn't really hang up with people my age Mm -hmm. uh, in the coaching field because in my head, and this is not to say that they couldn't help me, but they really couldn't help me. (laughs) Right, Um, right. But, you know, with the uh, older people, the adults, the people had been in the business for a while. That's probably why my trek was so much it's easier, but it, I wouldn't say it was easier, but it was smoother mm-hmm. because I was listening to people that were experienced and could open doors for me. Awesome. Awesome. So, so Eric, could you share a little bit about, you know, you know, your work now? I mean, as you as we fast forward, um, you know, you've done some amazing things. You you have a great partnership with Disney, Wild World ESPN. Uh, you're doing some things with the United Nations. Could you kind of expand on that? And what was that feeling like? You know, after you've completed, you know, your years as a professional and and in accomplishing those feats. Well, first I had to mourn the death of the basketball (laughs) player. We all mourned the death. Yeah. Yeah. It it took me like two years to get over. That dude was out of here. And I was like, nah, (laughs) he's coming back. That's right. He'll come back. That's our first thing. We know the comeback. Mm -hmm. But I remember my last job over in the Philippines and uh, she was playing and she I, I was playing and she was pregnant. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I know I'm going to go over here and hoop. They're going to want me to stay. Right. And it's October. My son's due in January, and the season ends in April. Mm-hmm. I ain't going to make it. Right. I'm like, man. Yeah. So I remember talking to my mom, and I called her from the Philippines. And I said, the phone rang. Hello? 
And as soon as she, she didn't even say hello, she was like, now, Eric, I was like, I know. <laughs> I got to get back home. I'm going back. So I mourned the death of him from then for two years. Mm -hmm. But I missed something when I was in that, that mourning mode. I missed the travel. And then I understood what I had attained as far as the information right. over in these different countries around the world. I was, I was a professional traveler, mm -hmm. for one. I can travel by myself so well. <laughs> you know, right. I if I get stuck here, cool, it's okay. I know mm -hmm. what to do. And then I was like, I love the game. I had been injured, so I got into training, and I went back, and I got certified through the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Mm. Uh, so now I was resume building. There you okay? go. Okay. Because I'm like, I got to do something. And I'm, if someone comes and wants their son or daughter to train, they may say, are you certified? Right. Right. And I just got certified just because. Sure. So after that, I started understanding the business of basketball globally. And I knew that my market was not just here in the U.S. I had so many more people all outside of the U.S. that I could contact. And then I knew that as a service of training, I could go to those countries and make a wage mm -hmm. and not die. There you go. There so you that go. was really it. So then I just started building. As mm -hmm. I'm building, I'm coming in contact with business people because I didn't have a business degree. Mm -hmm. um, I just knew that I needed to get around guys who were businessmen. So I would be at the table with them doing a the deal, just watching, listening. And the mm -hmm. one thing that I, I really had a problem with was when someone asked me, how much, are your pri how much is your training? And I didn't know how to answer it. Right. But one day I saw this guy and he said, well, how much is your service? And he looked right him in the eye and said, it's $100 an hour. And he didn't budge. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's how you do it. There okay. you go. All right. Well, that, was the that, power move right that was there. the power move. <laughs> that was the so power move right there. Power lesson. we're going to on that when we come back. Back Hold after the break. The seats. Once again, Man. this is In Touch Radio, reality radio where everyone is a star. Yes, sir. This is Power Moves power presented moves. by Sports and Entertainment Partners and Pro the CEO. All right, See man. you after the break, yep. baby, we'll baby. Be back. Don't go nowhere. We'll be back. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. You got up this morning. You got up this morning. Eyes sneaking open as the feet hit the floor. Got to thank God for the rise this day. The stove perking the smell of nutrition. Get to your destination with planned unselfish acts. Bulletin board read, do you have any to spare? Happiness and understanding. We all have experienced that one phone call. Family member, co-worker, friend has passed on. We don't know our last evening or morning. Get up. Help someone out. Now walk it out. You got up this morning. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. You can reach out to DLD at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. Hi, I'm Donald L. Dowers Jr., your motivational guru. This is the DLD Motivational Moment. One darn second. America since 2017 is suffering from a serious hiccup. 9-11 is seriously overused in a distasteful manner. Every day the cops are calling on an innocent, innocent person of color. It amazes me that America has come down to this. A person of color becomes a person of interest. Waffle House, the dorm, Starbucks is a few. This is not the lunch counters, sit-ins of the 1960s. 2019, harassed simply for being black and proud. Hold on one darn second. This has been the DLD Motivational Moment. Pre-order my new book, Motivational Moments, at DLD28-2002 at yahoo.com or 813-394-5875. In Touch Radio. All right, we're back on Power Move. Celebrities, athletes, the influential executives share how they make money, attract power, and earn, earn respect. respect, baby. And these, this family right here earns a lot of respect, respect. in the basketball world. 
Um, and, and speaking of which, Kevin, could you kind of expand on uh, yeah, you know where, where Eric was coming from when he said he earned respect when he, he learned when he was at that business meeting saying, mm -hmm. you know what, how much do you charge per hour? $100 with a puffed up chest and everything. <laughs> 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 right? So kind of ex expand on that. And then how did that evolve into your, your family life? Yeah, man, for sure. So I, I knew then that, you know, before that, I wanted to work for me. And and it was the same. I had the same passion in basketball as I do now in business. Mm -hmm. You know, so that basketball really helped me to start this company and to provide for my for my family. Right. So the first thing you got to do is prepare. So my preparation would be, you know, y'all probably see me now. I'd be up at 4 o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. running around the house typing a proposal. Right. Because I got to prepare. Mm-hmm. To even go into that office mm -hmm. so from being around these guys in business you know they they were like come with me because i was cool i'm the athlete right but i'm like i'm gonna go down there and see what they're doing mm -hmm. i gotta see what they're doing so i can take some of those traits into the basketball world because the mo most people who are doing business in the basketball world are coaches right they're not businessmen mm -hmm. so i'm the new age 2.0 businessman in the basketball world because i played it that's right. And I'm in business, mm -hmm. making the dollar for myself. Right. So, you know, I was like, well, now just continue to learn, continue to grow, build your resume, M make a dollar on the side so you can continue to go. And for all those entrepreneurs out there that's trying to, you know, make it in their, their field, uh, the first thing you got to do is sacrifice. And it was it was difficult at first. I had two houses, two, two BMWs, you know, <laughs> and I make money on the left, give it to the right. Money on the left, <laughs> give it to the right. And I was like, wait a minute. Why you got these cars and all that? Mm -hmm. For what? You know, nobody even comes over here. <laughs> right. you know, why you got all this stuff? You don't need that. Yeah. Okay, now get rid of it, downsize, and build your company. Mm -hmm. You know, right. build your brand. And I got into all of that and learning, and I would watch people. I watch uh, Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. I look at them. I'm like, man, psh, you could do it yourself. Yeah, you got to ask out, them. Shout out for Damon you know? John, my boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, those are some of the things that, the aspects of business that I put into from the business world into the basketball world to continue to grow. So I'm in my 14th year with daily training. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of my guys, congratulations. you know, oh, congratulations. some of, some people like, man, you hadn't had a job yet. I'm like, I'm not, you know, <laughs> working for me, you know, because I value my freedom more so than the dollar. I had right. job offers and I got a degree from TCU, but I was like, man, I'm gonna work for myself so I can be with my family. Mm. So, right. so, Speaking so, of family, yeah. So let's talk to Shell on this. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, you know, your husband is very passionate about what he's done, and you know, I'm definitely a big fan of you all as a family. You've been married as a couple. How many years now? Seventeen. 17. Awesome. Awesome. Ooh. Seventeen. So, that's so, huge. So, Yo, say it one more time. Seventeen. Seventeen. Let's get some applause because not too many yeah. people yeah. stay yeah. married. Yeah. Yeah. That's huge. Black excellence in the house. Yeah. Her, her. But, so, the, but the, 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 it's not, it, we're friends. We were friends first. And mm -hmm. I think that's why we, we've been able to sustain um, for as long as we have because we have been friends. Right. And, and that's important when you're in a business of sport, you have to travel and you have to, you know, sacrifice. But one of the things, too, is, you know, you have a family and you have a child together and um, your son is obviously, you know, with you all a lot. So And he's talk, with us today. He's yeah, in the back. So yeah. we'll be bringing him out soon. Yeah, we'll be getting him out here. But talk to um, our, our audience just about what what it takes to, you know, be in um, close proximities with each other. Y'all do work together and you do life together and you're, you know, obviously have a son who's emerging in his sport and you guys have done an excellent job um, thus far in, you know, helping him come into this the right way. So what are some of the things you could give people who are listening about marriage and working hard together, raising your son and, and, and really helping him get to the level of success that he's having so far and to keep that desire mm. for yourselves and for him really high. What, what are some of the things you would recommend or suggest to people? Well, one of the things I think that we always keep uh, first and, and, and in the front of our minds is our family unit. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we, we get teased a lot is that we travel in threes, <laughs> which, which is okay with us. And I That's think right. Eric has set a great tone as to how he wants his child raised and 
and the family unit to be. So mm -hmm. uh, he is the leader. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. But, you know, I am the co-leader. That's right. right. That's right. right. So, That's so right. with that being said, I have a vision for Eric's uh growth as well mm -hmm. and i give him a little bit of mom but then he has that coach side as well so <laughs> right. it's you know i i i'm a disciplinary mm -hmm. uh i um i uh, really really pay attention to details when it comes to him how he acts how he moves how he mm -hmm. looks because i'm always thinking of his future mm -hmm. okay. you know being a, a head coach in a professional realm and also being a gm mm -hmm. i know what they look for sure, right, after sure. being a recruiter for a number of years sure. i know what they look for and sure. i know they're going to pick my son apart mm -hmm. and i want him to still shine bright regardless, regardless. of whatever that they, they see so i'm always on him about you know how to carry himself how mm -hmm. to uh speak you know mm -hmm. everybody's always watching you whether sure. you think so or not um but you know it, it it's a it's a challenge at times mm -hmm. And he he gets ripped pretty hard um, <laughs> from me, uh, guys, from huh? me and his dad. You know, on the court, on the court. You know, Eric trains him. Right. And I sit back and I watch, but also watch Eric Jr.'s demeanor, how mm -hmm. he's receiving those things. Mm -hmm. And, I, and at, at some point, you know, there's that conflict of dad and coach, right. which yeah. I am the buffer yeah. in between okay. because, okay. you know, I'm see, on both I see, sides. I see you smiling. <laughs> 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 hey, come, bring, come on in this. But he thinks I'm mom it. trying to save him, but I'm really not. I'm, I'm really it's cool, not. cool, though. You know, he's, I mean... Man, the great ones, they've been trained hard. I, I go back to even just the animals, man. The lion, they ain't just jumping through that, that ring of fire just because, man. Right, they've been right. trained. If you see the training that goes behind it, mm -hmm. it's going to be it's brutal. Yeah. Before you go to war, it's, it's brutal. That's right. Nobody's in, man, they think they're in football training camp smiling. <laughs> they don't want to go to preseason. <laughs> it's brutal, but yeah. if you want to be at that elite level in life, period, it's right. going to be hard, hard Sacrifice. work. Yeah. Man, it's going to be that. So that's what's going on. I mean, mm -hmm. he ain't supposed to like it. If yeah. it was fun and, you know, all just giddy, then yeah. his homeboys will be doing it with him. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You know, Everybody they, want to they don't want to get up at six. Yeah, you know they don't want to go to the gym every day. They don't want to, you know, come home and talk about it. And he don't want to do it all the time either. But right. you got to continue to push. Mm -hmm. You can't stop. That's where most coaches. That's why it's hard for uh, me to give him to a coach because they're not gonna push him past the point right mm -hmm. to, of greatness mm -hmm. to become great. Right. You got to get pushed past a point. That's right. 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 And right. they can't always touch those buttons. You know what's interesting is, um, you know, one of my associates was at the the USA basketball camp um, in Colorado with you guys, uh -huh. and uh, and he was like, "Yeah, man, there was this, there was this family here that started <laughs> speaking about, you know, what it takes to to parent a, a, an athlete." And kudos to you guys because you know you you set a, a precedent, and I think, you know. It would be interesting, and it's almost like a challenge. But I, I think you guys could do a platform, whether uh, you know parents helping their children, mm -hmm. um, you know, become prof not professional athletes, but be the best that they can be right. in general, right? Right. Um, because the fact that you guys went in as a unit was spoke volumes. Mm -hmm. So you know, I want to applaud you guys for for what you do in terms of keeping the family mm -hmm. together. Um, you guys have a mission. You, you like you said, Shell, that you know you know, while dad and son are doing their thing, you already have a different vision and a, and a totally different outlook. And when it comes down to running a business, you have to have both perspectives. So you know, once again, I just want to applaud you guys for that. Which brings me to yeah. thank you, Mr. Bob, my man. So it brings me to you know, so so how are you looking to expand that internationally? Um, because like I said, I think. By you guys being a unit, a family unit, and you guys are evolving, and, and E Junior is like 2.0 for you, but you have a passion for global awareness and culture. Mm -hmm. and, and nowadays, you know, I, I feel that we are so myopic in about United States, United States, and no matter what your uh, affiliation, you know, I'm definitely all about America, mm -hmm. right? But I do understand the importance of if I'm traveling, <laughs> right. I don't want to get be a target either, right? right? So, you know, kind of could you expand on on you know your your vibe with international relations and 
and how do you see well, basketball? I was going to say one of the things we were fortunate to do is the United Nations project. That's Thinking right. Thinking like that, I right. believe, is where he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, how yeah, yeah. Um, like that. Well, back in 2013, um, I was presented with the war with the Millennium Development Goals with the United Nations mm -hmm. uh, through their athletes and artists uh, program. And I got a chance to touch a lot of different countries. So I understood that their plight was the same as, as ours. Right. You know, they wanted their, their, their young kids to develop and be the best. And that's what everything uh, kind of boils down to. So with being a part of that, again, I was growing my resume. Mm -hmm, that's so right. Now for nine, six years, I've been sitting on that board. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it just helps me to reach out to players all over the world. Um, and give them that information. And he, what he was referring to was we did the uh, United Nations um, uh, Day of Sport at IMG Academy back in it was 2016, was 2016, it? 2016, yeah. Uh, 2016. And we had about 40 countries of delegates that were just coming there to learn how to help their young players just develop. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't know. Right. So I was like, wow, they, you know, we take for granted the info yeah, we have. Absolutely. And they were like, you know, well, how do you train them? How mm -hmm. do you make them, you know, college ready? You know, so we gave a seminar for two days. Uh, and it was good, man. Yeah, so, it was powerful. That's powerful. And, yeah. and I still hear from uh, one of the athletes oh, yeah. uh, through Twitter. He, you know, messages me right. just on Coach Carr. Mm -hmm. um, I really need help with how we are approaching sport in my country right. what would you advise me if i wanted to do this so as it's it's a it manifests itself because of the work that you mm -hmm. you know led and we had a great team eu Corey. that's right and um and um uh, what's my man name down in naples uh the yes. other Corey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two Corys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah. So this is a you know manifestation manifestation of the work that you think you think globally, not just domestically, and that's a huge uh, thinking point for all of us that we need to be more open about where business can come from. That's right. And that's how to right. Create our relations. So, hey, 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 so are we ready for break here? We're gonna go on break, and we're gonna come back with. E 2.0. 2.0. <laughs> we'll yes. be back. We'll right. be back. Power move. Power move. Stay tuned. This is Dale Day. Join me every Monday at 7 p.m. for Jazz at Miss Connie's House, bringing you the smoothest jazz and the coolest guests right here on In Touch Radio. In Touch Radio, Reality Radio, where everyone is a star. Yes, Real quick, sir. Power Couples Ball happening on September 21st. If you are a power couple, you need to be at that event. Tickets are $100 each. Yes, sir. And All right. So we're back. We're, we're back. back. So we're here with the father, Eric 
uh, Daly Sr. Now we're with Eric Daly Jr. Yes, you are seeing a father-son duo in the studio. The Dailies are with us. Thank you, guys. Welcome to the show. Welcome here. to the show. Thank you. Glad that you are here. Um, you are someone who has, in your early, early tenure in sport, um, you came into the basketball world with two great examples. Talk to us a little bit about your parents and their support for you as a young man coming into basketball. And then and they can't do nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so seriously, talk about mom and dad in terms of how you came into basketball. Well, I was basically born into it. Okay. Literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> dad played overseas in college. Mom coached pro. So I was just raised around it. Ever since I was little, I've been around the game on the – Floors and stuff at the games, at my mom's games. My dad taking me to the gym when he trains people. Then later on, that became me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a part of my life. So so talk to us about how did you know you loved basketball? And when was the moment you realized that you had a little game? Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. Well, I always had, like, a love for it because when you're born into something, you don't really know nothing else. Yeah. Right. Good, good point. Then... I started realizing I was like, like, I could do this for real when I was around like 10, 11 playing like rec league and killing everybody in rec league. Then as I got older, I was like, yeah, I can go pro with this. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh-oh, okay. uh-oh, uh-oh. All right, so, so you see basketball as a big part of your future, but talk to us about what it takes um, or the kind of work that you've been doing as a student in the classroom because you go to – IMG Academy, yes, right? Sir. And then talk to us about the work that you put in uh, as a student and an athlete there to be your very best. First thing is, not easy at all. Okay. <laughs> what do you mean easy. by that? Go ahead. Work. It's just work. Consistently work. No days off. Every day waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning going to the gym. Mm. Then right after that, you got practice like mm -hmm. 8. Mm -hmm. 6 to 7, get a little work in with my dad. Practice at 8. Eight to like eleven, we practice with my team, weights and all that. Mm. Then go to school at twelve. And you go from school to twelve to like twelve to six. It's like twelve wow. to six. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So you doing six, <laughs> six? You doing twelve hour days? Easy. Yeah. It's it's rough, but <laughs> hey, I make it work. I make it work. So so wow. So what do you do during your downtime to kind of you know take all this in, right? Oh uh, wow. Um. Hmm. You play video games or something? Yeah, I definitely play video games. <laughs> I play video games. I like sleeping. That's my favorite thing. <laughs> Sleep, eat, and play video games other than basketball and school. So I'm just trying to – it's hard living a normal life as a hooper. Mm -hmm. And, like, now because, like, they cutting years off our life because we can go to the league early now. Okay. Starting mm -hmm. to go to the league. So what do, what do you, if you were to give us um, some things that you are interested in beyond basketball, what, do you like art? Do you like oh, um, music? I love know? music. Okay. Talk I love, to us about oh yeah, I ain't going to talk to a 16-year-old about <laughs> art. <Yeah. laughs> because I heard that you like art. So I just want to hear a little bit about, you know, what are some of the likes that you have out there that people wouldn't necessarily know? Oh, okay. Like, yeah. Okay. You got the inside scoop. <laughs> well, I like I like making music, actually. Okay, um, good stuff. I make beats on my computer a lot when okay. I'm bored okay. or something. Mm -hmm. If I had downtime, mm -hmm. I play a lot of video games. Really mm -hmm. good at 2K. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> so shout out, shout out to Marcus Howard and the Tag family. We might have to recruit little E Jr. <laughs> with the 2K. <laughs> Yes, That's sir. Excellent. Yeah, but other than that, I just like hanging out with friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I just try to live a normal life inside this. What, what about movies? You got movies. a favorite movie, Ooh, man? John Wick. John Wick. John Wick. That's my favorite movie right there. <laughs> Okay, yes, what what does John Wick represent for you, man? I don't know. He's just a dog, but he quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Shaka. Yeah, Shaka Zulu. That's my. That's another favorite series I watch. Oh wow! Okay, okay. Yes, excellent. Sir. Wow, I got some historical culture going you know, on. Yes, so, so talk to us about your dad. He's sitting right here. That's your like dad, but that's also your coach. Yeah. What is it like working with him daily? No, no <laughs> pun on <laughs> word. No <fun> word. <laughs> <laughs> well. It's my dad, so he gonna push me harder than any coach could, any person in the world could, and it's hard sometimes. But I gotta get through it, mm -hmm. and I do get through it. Okay. So like, we gonna make it work. He make me be the best I can, 
and do the best I can in everything I do. So, okay. so, so, awesome. where are we at with the one on one tournament? One on one, he can't beat me. He can't. Oh, beat me. Oh, <laughs> man. He can't beat me. Hey, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> <laughs> now, now he's hey. jumping. <laughs> I hey. knew I had to ask that power question right there. We, if I told him Christmas time. I said, "Look, man, <laughs> I'm done, man. Because either I'm gonna hurt you, or you're gonna hurt me." <laughs> so, the six six not jumping up at the top of the square, man. Look, man, I ain't got time to be doing all that. <laughs> but I do have one win on tape. <laughs> I got it. And so later on in life, I'm gonna show it to him. All right, all right. That's, that is that awesome. That don't count though. I couldn't <laughs> jump like I can. Now. Yeah, man. Well, you know what's so, funny because uh, I would I remember. Um, the videos with your dad when he was like yeah he's trying to jump he barely could touch the rim and then now you are like bananas yeah. <laughs> you oh, like yeah. you like a jumping frog so you know what is when you hear your dad keep pushing you and you're like man he's killing me <laughs> like mm -hmm. dad I gotta go home and all that stuff and then all of a sudden you see results you know what do you what, what do you think wow um I think I just gotta keep listening to him. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, wow, that's, that's deep. Because awesome. you know, a lot of young kids would be like, "Man, I'm not gonna say nothing. Man. Right. You know, I'm not gonna admit it." But that's 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 when, that's huge of you to be humble at, to say when, that. When your guys that saw us at USA, they had a question for the parents on the on the board, and the question was, "Why are you here?" It was a question to the parents, and everybody chimed in. And mm -hmm. I, I I got when I went up there, I answered it. I said. I'm here because it's confirmation. And they were like, what confirmation? Confirmation to my son. <laughs> <laughs> and now he hear me all day long out there. Mm -hmm. The first thing was we practiced with the molten ball, and he was like, how you know they're going to have molten balls? And when he went into the first day of practice, they had 100 molten balls. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, man, the boys, six, eight, six, nine, they're going to be jumping at you, man. And at the USA, they was jumping at him. I was like, yeah, I'm right. Okay. I ain't going to say nothing. He's just going to come up to me. So, so now, you know, I, I, I push him, and... He don't understand that he's so far ahead. It's like when you run in a race, you're so far ahead, you don't see nobody. You might think you're behind. Right, right. Mm -hmm. So even last night, it was crazy. I walked into his room. It was about 11 o'clock. I said, yo, check this video out. And there was a guy talking about passive income. Mm hmm <laughs> And he was like, man, I'm 15. I'm like, that's okay. When it's time, you go going to understand yeah. passive income. income. And yeah, now, absolutely. within his life, he has opportunity to attain that because you got to have that that base where you're making your earned income. That's right. And then you go out and you create that studio that you can make your beats or somebody yep. or that mm -hmm. dealership or that daily training. Or invest in a video invest, game. Hey, invest, you, know, you, know, you know, it's a perfect technology. example of that that you need to follow is Greg Anthony. Yes, sir. Because Greg Anthony, when he was in college, right, he had his own business. So we gonna we gonna wrap it up, man. Yeah. But but it, it, it leave, leave us some inspiration for the young people who are coming along. What would you what would you what what would you say to the young person who's trying to get there? And you still have a way to go. But what is it that you would like to leave for the younger people here trying to work hard and get somewhere? Um, just listen to your dad. He okay. gonna have the best interest. <laughs> okay. I know someday it's gonna be hard. Like you don't want to listen. He don't know nothing. But just give him attention. So listen mm -hmm. to your parents. Listen, listen, and, and it's not only your dad, because some of these some of these folks don't even. I mean, you're fortunate because you have a mother and a father. Mm -hmm. So listen to your parents. So really, it's listening or to your, your parents, yeah. right? You listen to your mom as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, one so last good. thing I want to share so because the, the theme of this this episode is opportunity. What opportunities are coming your way that you you can't wait to take advantage of? Uh, Hopefully to play on the USA U17 national team. Awesome. All right. Yeah, All right. Hey, well, we're going to hope for that for you. Yes, and we are. We're going to hope, obviously, you graduate. And then one day get to that next level, and we all see you. And we'll continue to be proud of you. Thank you, Eric, sure, for coming for sure. on. Sure. Thank you, wife, Shell. Del, e, e. Junior. E. Junior. Once again, this is Power, Power Moves, Moves. Moves. with celebrities, Moves. athletes, Moves. key influential executives share how they make money, money. how they attract power, Power, and how they earn respect. respect. It's not a game over here, baby. Yes. This is Power Moves. Power Moves. See you next week, baby. Yes, baby. Right. We out. We out. Thank, Thank you, California. guys. <laughs>